Matthew chapter 4. If you wanted to, you could go to Mark chapter 1 or Luke chapter 4. I'm in Matthew. <coughs> the last time we were here and we talked, we saw Jesus come to John the Baptist for his baptism. And the scripture says that in, in verse number 1 that he was led up into the Spirit or by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And we'll look at that a little, little deeper here in just a minute. But if Jesus' baptism was to set an example for us, and let's face it, that's all it could be. I mean, in interpreting that event, you're very limited on the why. Because he didn't have to be. It certainly wasn't for salvation. He was sinless. It wasn't to become a follower because he is the followed. There was no church to be instituted in. Y'all realize that 90% of our churches, that's what baptism has become, is just the uh, initiation into the local church. Person gets saved, then we'll join the church, we baptize. <coughs> and, and that's what it's actually become. But he did it to give us the example by which we are to live. And if his baptism was the example, this morning his temptations in the wilderness is to identify. Think about it. God knew nothing about sin. He's perfect. He's sinless. He's righteous. He's holy. And let's face it, I, I you know, I, it, it almost sounds like an oxymoron to think there are things that God cannot do, but God, before this temptation in Jesus Christ, would have not understood sin, would he? I, I have to be very careful because I have spent so many years and been around so many families who have lost loved ones, I have to be careful the words and verbiage that I use. <clears throat> because what do we do? We walk up, we hug their neck, and I'm so sorry, I, 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 you have my sympathy. And invariably, if we're not careful, what comes out of our mouth is, I know how you feel. Or if you've lost a loved one, I don't know how you feel. I've never lost a spouse. I've lost loved ones. I, I misspoke that. But if, if you've lost a spouse, I don't know how you feel. I haven't been there and done that. There are certain things that come into your lives that I may or may not understand because I may or may not have been there and done that. I may not have been through it. <clears throat> Jesus can completely identify with us because immediately after his baptism God called him off in the wilderness by himself and put him through let's read the text if you'd like to stand with me then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, It's written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said unto him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to be in this place, <coughs> to look into your word. We pray that you'd bless it, use it. Father, just by your Holy Spirit, speak to us the message that we as your people so desperately need to hear. Father, strengthen us, guide us, Show us what you want us to do. But Lord, then give us the courage and the strength just to do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. <coughs> now, having been here for a while, a lot of this message is going to sound like a, a repeat, a rerun. I'm not even sure, I, I don't remember, but I may have even preached out of this particular text before. But we're not going to ignore it, and there's always something good that we can find in it. But I want to start out, and I, I preface that because I'm going to start out by playing the broken record. Are y'all ready? You've heard it a thousand times. Got to hear it again. If you get the Genesis right, the rest of it is ten times easier to understand. Because here we have, this is actually the first time that Jesus is seen uh, stepping out into his ministry alone. We, we looked at his birth, we looked at his, his circumcision, we saw him when he ran away from his family, or didn't run away, but snuck away and, and let them leave without him. Still I hadn't figured out to this day how Mary loses her own son, but she did. And uh, then he shows up at the Jordan River, and John is baptizing, and he submits to John's baptism. And now is the time for Jesus to begin his earthly ministry. And in the beginning of his earthly ministry... He actually gives us the theme, the purpose, and the synopsis of everything our Lord and Savior came to this earth to do. Do you realize, and I hope you will by the time I'm through if you don't already, that if this passage of Scripture that we read were the only passage of Scripture in the entire uh, Bible, we have enough to be saved by. Now, there are a lot of other things we need to study. There are a lot of other things we need to look at. There are a lot of things that teach us and, and cause us to grow closer to Christ and closer to God and uh, to uh, become more righteous, more holy every single day of our lives as we continue to grow in Christ. But this is enough to be saved on. And if there's a phrase, and I, and I guess maybe a title to the message, if there's something that I want you to get out of this message this morning, it is simply this particular phrase. Y'all ready? What Adam wrought, Jesus bought. If you look down through this passage of Scripture, and I know it's familiar to you, I've talked about it over and over, I'm sure uh, that you remember 
This is the first time that we see any classifications of sin. And he undergoes or is tempted in every single area of life. Every sin that you can commit, every sin that I can commit, every weakness, every failure, every temptation that we can go through, <coughs> excuse me, is can fall in these three distinct temptations. He comes to him after he'd been fasting for 40 days and Jesus is hungry. Now folks, I don't know what it's like to go without food uh, more than a few hours. Maybe on a really, really bad day. I mean, I, I have come in even recently at 7, 8 o'clock at night because I don't eat breakfast and I can't do that. Uh, I, I do if I've been up long enough. I did this morning because I've been up since 6. <laughs> but on a normal day, I don't know when 6 comes. And so I don't eat breakfast. And I've come in and and be really weak and think, what in the world? And, and I look back on the day and, well, I hadn't eaten anything all day long. I mean, from the time I got up to the time, you know, it's 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, and I'm thinking, man, I hadn't ate all day. No wonder I don't feel well. You know, it's just been, been me and my cups of coffee all day long. I, I'm not only don't feel well, but I'm bouncing off the walls not feeling well. I don't know what it's like to go hungry. Especially to fast for 40 days. And here Jesus is out in the wilderness as he's hungry and Satan comes to him and he says, you, you who you say you are? You're so powerful. Turn these stones into bread. And he tempted him with the lust of the flesh. Did you get that? You see, a majority of the sin in our life is just simply to satisfy this flesh. He comes back, <coughs> back to him later. After Jesus dispels him, he comes back to him again. And now with the temptation of... Uh, my mind just went blank. Y'all ever have those, those, those blank moments? He comes to him and uh, he, he takes him up to the pinnacle of the temple, the scripture says. And he shows him all of the world. And he says, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll, I'll give all this to you. And, and he tempts him with the lust of the eyes. We see it. We want it. It looks good. One of my favorite uh, uh, illustrations, and, and understand something, Satan will never, ever, ever come to you as a child of the darkness, he'll never come to you as Satan. He'll never come to you as evil. He will always present himself as an angel of light. He'll always wrap himself up in a pretty package. He'll always make himself look appealing. That's one of the reasons that I don't worry. Everybody is, is looking at, at the disaster that's going on, not only in our country, but you're seeing it now worldwide and the tribulation is upon us. No, it's not. No, it's not. For two reasons. Number one, the, the mark of the beast, you're not going to have to fight 90% of the world to get them to take it. Okay? Do we understand that? 
and even mainstream news that you turn them on and, and people are rising up all over the world. America, Canada, France is having... The truckers have come out in France. I didn't know France had trucks. <laughs> Australia is finally starting to rise up. All over the world you're seeing it. But that's not what's going to take place when the Antichrist comes. Yes, things are going to be at a precipice of disaster, and this man is going to step in and say, I can fix all of this. You just follow me. They're not going to have to fight. They're not going to have to protest. 90% of the world is just going to bow down and worship this fool. I heard a preacher tell me years and years and years ago, and I, I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. He said, as long as we're fighting, we're in good shape. As long as we're divided, we're in good shape. Because as long as man has a sinful heart, y'all get this, as long as man has a sinful heart, we don't need to be unified. Think about that for a while. Take that, one, that, take that one home and chew on it for a while. See what you get out of it. What happens when sinful men are unified? Sin rages. We don't unify and rally around great things. You, you, you really want this country unified? That's going to mean overlooking abortion. You really want this country unified? That's going to mean overlooking and turning our backs to the gay and lesbian agenda and not only turning our backs to it and ignoring it, but accepting it in our midst. I don't want that kind of unity. Y'all remember back when uh, the Iraq War took place and we, we finally took Baghdad and the people were dancing in the streets and the news was all about freedom for Iraq. I can't remember his name, but I wish I could because he had it pegged. So he said, yep, they're now free to sin. First thing they did was open up the clubs. Here, you're, you're driving down the road, it's a hot summer day sweat pouring off of you, maybe the air conditioner in your vehicle not working right. You're driving along, hot, you're thirsty, and there is a sign for, for a Bush or Budweiser or Coors. They ain't got a can or a bottle. Well, honey, they got a a can or a bottle with the pictures of ice flowing off that thing. And it looks wonderful and it looks nice. And then, don't get me wrong, I am not 100%, I've had, we've had this discussion, I'm not 100% opposed to the use of alcohol. I'm a use of, uh, opposed to the misuse of it. <coughs> but what does he do with the sign? He paints a pretty picture. Well, he ain't going to show you that picture of where it leads, though. He ain't going to show you that picture of, of what's going to happen when you follow after him. He's coming to you as an angel of light. But now we see him offering everything. He took him up on a high mountain, showed him the kingdoms of the world. Lust to the eyes. But then on the pinnacle of the temple, I'm just now realizing that I still had that backwards. <coughs> on the pinnacle of the temple, he told him, he said, if you're who you say you are, if, if, if you're the Lord, you... The scripture says that the angels I have charge over you, they'll take care of you. He said, just, just, just throw yourself down. And herein lies the third and final 
sin that we fall into, and that's the pride of life. Go home by yourself where nobody else can see it. You can burn it, you can throw it away, you can get rid of it, destroy it, whatever, and write down your sins. You know what they are. Every single one of them will fall in one of those three categories. To satisfy the lust of this flesh. Because it looks so pretty. The entire porn industry is based on the lust of the eyes. It can't be based on lust of the flesh because you ain't allowed to touch them girls. Am I right? I can say a few things where there's no children in the room. Lust of the eyes. But then there's the pride of life. I want to be somebody. I want to be proven <laughs> that I'm right. Any, any, any of y'all enjoy being wrong? Mmm, caught you. <laughs> None of us enjoy being wrong. Do, do we all enjoy being well thought of? Yeah, we do. Now, the older I get, the less I worry about that, and the older I get, the more I realize that if I'm really well thought of, I must be doing something really, really wrong. Wayne said it in Sunday school class. Jesus told him, he said, they hated me, they'll hate you. And if somebody out there doesn't dislike us, we probably need to do a checkup and see what's going on in our own lives because we're not offending anybody probably means we're not standing for very much. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Go to Genesis. <coughs> Chapter 3, one simple verse. We're not going to go through the entire temptation, the entire discourse between Satan and Eve, but chapter 3, verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, bless the flesh, isn't it? And that it was pleasant to the eyes. Mm, yeah, I remember seeing that, don't I? and a tree that's desirable to make one wise. Well, we know what happened next. She took it and ate it. And she was so pleased with it, she took it to Adam and talked him and eat. But you see, everything that Adam caused, everything that Adam had wrought upon this world, Jesus is now redeeming. Honey, he not only understands the temptations that we go through, he not only understands how it is that we as frail, weak, sinful human beings do the stupid, sinful, and sometimes even hurtful things that we do. He not only understands it, he defeated it. That day in the wilderness. If he hadn't defeated this in the wilderness, there would be no point in him ever going to the cross. Because he wouldn't have been a sinless sacrifice. He wouldn't have been the lamb that was without blemish and without spot. Romans chapter 5. you to notice something here. Begin reading in verse number 12. He says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, because all have sinned, 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there was no law. It means it wasn't put to your charge. You weren't being charged for it. You weren't being held accountable for that which you didn't know about. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not of the offense, is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God that is the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came for many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by one man's offense judgment comes to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so... Through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in the justification of life. That's the gospel in a nutshell. That's the entire purpose for which he came. He preached it by his actions as he battled in a duel with Satan himself out in the wilderness he conquered every sin that you and I can possibly fathom or imagine when he withstood Satan and what Adam had wrought upon the world Jesus now can redeem back to himself his people, you and I, when we just simply by faith accept him. That's the gospel. That's what he came for. That's what he is leaving you and I in this world for. And that, my friends, is what's getting us in trouble out in the world. You know, every now and then I have to pull back myself and I have to realize <clears throat> when I see a post and this guy is a, an absolute idiot and I slip up every now and then and tell them they're absolute idiots. <laughs> Vile, evil creatures. But you know what? My fight's not with that person. I feel so sorry for those people. Blind. Absolutely ignorant of the grace of God. I, I said this one time and, and, and I, I've said it in more places than just this church and it gets me in trouble when I say it to certain really conservative friendly is what I would say friendly crowds out in the world. Do you know what I would love more than to see Nancy Pelosi and George Soros and all these evil tyrants that are out there? You know what I would love to see more than them in jail or dead? I'd love to see them on their knees in repentance. Folks, we can't hold grudges and we can't fight human beings because some of these folks are going to end up getting saved and we're going to see them in heaven. What are we going to do then? Are we going to have that memory of all the stupid, hurtful, evil things that they did here on earth? No. Because that's not where the fight's at. The fight is directly with Satan. And thank God, we don't have to fight it. Jesus already won it.